What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and many of you alerted me to the presence of a new D&D survey. What I've been doing since these surveys have started to come out is filling them out for myself here on the internet. That's also something interesting because we've learned through the course of doing this that sometimes what I get as a survey will be different than what you get as a survey, and so on and so forth. So this time it's all about feats. And this specific set of feats, it's about going to be feats in basically the um, the player's handbook. So I do want to show you something that is very interesting to me. Uh, because Wizards of the Coast has the absolute worst website management, uh, I think, in the history of websites. Um, anyway, uh, but I, if you're new here and you want to see this number reach 100 like I do... Uh, hey, look, I finally hung that shield up on the wall. Uh, anyway, consider subscribing to the channel. So let's go ahead and jump over here. So if you go to the Wizards of the Coast website, you can't find that survey. You go here and the latest news is from December 13th, which is about Sage Advice book updates. So if I go to click on articles, let's say, and I go, oh, here we go. There's a whole bunch of other articles here that I didn't know about. And I think it's under, is it under news? Or do I have to go find it on their Twitter page? No, no. Oh yeah, look, the last one here was about spells. So I would have to go to uh, Twitter and we could go search Wizards of the Coast. Because um, a lot of people just sent me the direct link. But if we go to that, we can go ahead and see right here. Got a keen mind, let's test your alertness. We know you're observant. Our latest survey on feats is now live with a working link. Here is that survey. Again, you can't find it unless you follow them on social media. But would you like to rate the feat material presented in the player's handbook? Yes, I would. What was the first edition of D&D you played? Third. Now, right out the gate, if yours is only fifth, you'll probably have less questions than I would, potentially. And sometimes they sneak in secret NDAs and things of that nature. Okay, do you play with feats? Always. I'm very curious about the people who don't, honestly. How satisfied were you with the elements of the feats section as presented in the player's handbook? I'm very satisfied. Uh, I'd say I'm satisfied with feats overall. Let's start there. Satisfied. Also, it doesn't stop you if you don't check something, so do make sure you check everything you want to rate. Because if you don't check something and click next, it won't say like, hey, you forgot to rate this. It'll just keep going. Um, to me, again, someone having played in the past, the presence of feats was a guarantee. There was no way I could have assumed that it wouldn't happen, let alone do we go to find out that, yeah, technically per 5th edition rules, feats are a variant option, not a standard practice for the game. So uh, I'm satisfied because there were feats. Uh, you could also make the argument for slightly satisfied because there's far, far less than I was used to from previous editions. And they are kind of, some of them are just real stinkers. Like there's some that are just garbage and you would never take. And there are some that obviously rise to the top of things that are amazing and you see them taken all the time. Albeit some of them also less interesting mechanically, but so good you always take them. All right. So alert. Uh, this is actually one of the first feats I ever took in the very first 5th edition campaign I ever played at level 4. My character took alert, and it was super useful from the amount of times that we were sabotaged and, like, ambushed and whatnot. So, I'm very satisfied with alert. I'm going to say I'm slightly satisfied with athlete. It's okay. Same thing with actor. There are uh, races that have abilities that are better than actor. There are subclass features that are better than actor. Actor got a lot of credit in the in the uh, in the player's handbook because it was one of the only ways to get a bonus to your charisma with those feats. We've obviously seen adjustments to the way feats and things have happened now, so you probably would have a choice potentially. Um, but actor was one of the only ways to get a plus one charisma and also still get a feat. Charger, uh, I'm dissatisfied with. I don't think it's great. I would say I'm satisfied with Crossbow Expert. It gets a little bit of a bump up because the benefits of Crossbow Expert do work with spell attacks. Defensive Duelist is garbage, and I hate it. Um, you can fight me on that, but it is such a specific use that I don't think I've ever seen it 
maybe one or two people have found a way to, I guess if you're the Cobalt Soul Monk from Critical Role, uh, you know, the Tal'Dorei campaign setting, where you can use key points to get extra reactions, then you might make more use out of Dual Wielder. I'm sorry, of Defensive Duelists. Dual Wielder, I'm going to say I'm slightly satisfied with it. It's okay. Dual wielding in general in 5th edition is something I'm not a huge fan of. I don't think it's handled very well. It's kind of... It's a lot of investment to get the most out of it for just a bonus action attack and only one at that. And there's so many other ways to get bonus action attacks. Things like Polearm Master, Great Weapon Fighter. Now, I know that two-weapon fighting is a reliable thing, but again, so is Polearm Master. You know, you have other... And then it's, it's your whole action economy is devoted to this one thing when if your class or something has better actions you know uses for bonus actions you're never going to get the benefit of your dual wielding because you could maybe be casting healing word or, or whatever dungeon delver um i i'm gonna say dissatisfied i don't think i've ever even taken it or be interested in it durable very dissatisfied um i'll say dissatisfied it gets the benefit, again, from having that plus one to Constitution. Again, a, a rare way to... There's not too many ways to get that. Okay. Uh, Elemental Adept, I'm very satisfied with. Grappler and Grappling in general. Uh, again, in older editions, Grappling used to be very crazy mechanically. Grappling in this edition is pretty simplistic, but Grappling, in my opinion, is something to be desired. So, Dissatisfied, Great Weapon Master, very satisfied. Healer, slightly satisfied with healer, slightly satisfied with heavy armor and heavy armor master, very satisfied with inspiring leader, slightly satisfied with keen mind and the armor traits in general. I mean, keen mind, you know, people are going to flock to it because they saw it in Critical Role Campaign 2. It's okay, just, you know, you can take your own notes, that works too. Um, linguist, again, they're okay. Lucky. Now, Lucky is an interesting one, because how do you rate Lucky? Do you like Lucky based on how powerful it is, or do you hate Lucky because of how powerful it is? I don't love Lucky, personally. Um, I've only ever seen it appear, I think, in one or two of my games. People have taken it. I think I've taken it, you know, as someone who had a Luck domain-based character, um, or like a Luck you know, God that I worshipped, uh, it made sense to me to take that. But, I don't know, it just, it's, I'll say I'm uh, slightly dissatisfied. Mage Slayer, slightly satisfied, and Magic Initiate. I'm slightly dissatisfied because of the way we've seen them take to certain new feats and new abilities. I think Magic Initiate obviously will be one of the number one candidates for an update, in this updated rule set to allowing you to cast the spells with your spell slots. That would be one of the big ones. Martial Adept, I'm going to say I'm slightly dissatisfied in it as well. Um, I guess maybe slightly satisfied. It's okay, uh, but it's not great. Uh, if you have superiority dice already, it's not bad. Same thing with the medium armor master feat. I'll say I'm satisfied. I think mobile's pretty solid. Um... And then slightly satisfied with moderately armored and slightly sla satisfied with mounted combatant. If you're someone who has access to a, again, when you see something like mounted combatant as a chosen option for a feat, you would think that mounted combat and mounts in general would have more steadfast rules in fifth edition. There is a very small section and obviously paladins and paladins are something that I play often have access to things like fine steed and fine greater steed. So mountain combatant can come into play in, in a big way. Uh, and I have seen that with a friend who played a paladin with the mounted combatant feat. Granted, as a magic item that I gave him, gave him that ability. Uh, and it went leaps and bounds and it allowed him to do so much and be so strong in combat already. You know, a paladin already, but that just, you know, raised it up. Observant, I'm very satisfied with. Part of me is really only that satisfied with Observant because, again, it was a way to get a plus one wisdom. There was not a lot of ways to do that. Uh, Polearm Master, very satisfied. It's a fantastic feat. It, you know, if you're looking to go that route, it's definitely worth it. Resilient, I'm also... Um, 
I'm gonna say I'm satisfied with Resilient, and the reason I say that is it is a phenomenal feat, right? Plus one to a given stat and proficiency in the saving throw of that. More often than not, you will only have two saving throw proficiencies. A common saving throw, and by that I mean either dexterity, constitution, or wisdom, and a less common saving throw, strength, intelligence, and charisma. And there are a couple ways around this, right? You know, monks get proficiency with every saving throw at level 14. Uh, rogues can get proficiency with wisdom saving throw. There are some subclass features that grant proficiency with different saving throws. Uh, but resilient, like most feats, are you can only take them once. And that's something also to consider. A feat can only be taken once unless it specifically states that it can be taken multiple times. So even if you had access to a bunch of feat opportunities, you could only ever take resilient one time. So this would be an opportunity for you to get something probably, I, I feel like it's usually either constitution saving throw if you're a caster and you want that benefit to concentration checks, dexterity possibly if you're a heavy armor person or like I, I feel like getting it on a barbarian wisdom proficiency is a big one right they want to get that so they're not going to get mind controlled and i say i'm satisfied with it because it's a fantastic feat but it is mechanically it is mechanically sound but it is boring like it will definitely be something that you will see present in the game and it will do stuff and you will be like hey look i have that feat it's helped me in such a way and that's cool but part of the things that they had said initially in their design concept behind feats is if you wanted to forego a ability score improvement and take a feat, a feat should be fundamentally strong. And this was echoed early, and I actually heard this from an in-person conversation I had with Jeremy Crawford a couple of years back. And I was talking about feats in general. Uh, and at that time, the conversation was they weren't going to do any more feats after the ones that came out in Xanathar's Guide because they said they weren't necessary and then the the general viewpoint from folks was that feats weren't even heavily used in the game. Granted, this was three years ago. Um, we've seen feats come out since then. Um, but the concept was a feat is something that would be such an impactful choice that you would make over not choosing an ability score improvement and it would fundamentally change the way you played the game in such a way that it felt like a big impact to your character. And I do fully understand and respect that mentality. I think that that's a really good decision from gameplay perspective. If I'm gonna invest in a feat, it will change the way I play my character because, or not just change the way my character, but I'll, I'll see the impacts, right? You know, if I take Polearm Master, I will see I'm hitting everybody with the butt of my weapon every turn as a bonus action. I have the ability to attack people when they enter my melee range. You know, I have things like that, right? I've got great weapon master. I can take the minus five to attack and do the plus 10 to damage. I can get an extra attack on a critical hitter when I kill an enemy. Those are big things that will change the way you play. I mean, we even say keen mind. You know, I made a little joke about it before, but the concept of remembering anything that you've read within the past 30 days that could change the way you play that character, right? Observant, the ability to read lips and a passive perception off the charts. Again, very good uh, mechanically as well, but it does, you could maybe mold your character around that. I find it kind of hard, and maybe I'm wrong, and maybe you'll correct me in the comments, and I would actually love that. Uh, you know, getting all of a sudden getting proficiency in wisdom saving throw. Yeah, you know, you might see it if you get hit with a wisdom saving throw. A lot of these other ones are so impactful, you're going to see them or they allow you to do a unique thing that you will see it all the time. Uh, you know, I would say like alert the ability to not be surprised. You know, that is pretty powerful. It might not come up too often, but that plus five initiative you will absolutely see pretty frequently. Proficiency in wisdom saving throws now all of a sudden. Well, maybe you don't get hit with wisdom saving throws for a while. And when you do, maybe you succeed. Maybe you still fail. It's... It's, like I said, mechanically very strong, and it's designed very well in that it gives you the benefit of a plus one to a given ability score. But again, it just, it's just not flashy enough for me to put very satisfied. I realize that was really long-winded, but apparently I'm very passionate about Resilient. Ritual Caster, I'm also going to say I'm very satisfied with. That, as another example, as something, because you don't necessarily even need to be a spellcaster to have access to the spells from Ritual Caster, and that could definitely 
alter the way your seemingly simple, uh, you know, champion fighter who has no magic now has access to a ton of magics, and that could be a big change, right? Savage Attacker, slightly satisfied. It's okay. If, Sla if Savage Attacker worked on all damage, not just the weapon damage, that would be big, right? I think that might be a little on the strong side, but, like, if you're a paladin with Savage Attacker and you smite and it will allow you to reroll any of the damage dice you choose, that would be pretty strong. But I also feel like that would be impactful enough, but maybe that's too power gamey. I don't know. Sentinel, I think we can all agree Sentinel is very strong. I'm very satisfied with that. Sharpshooter in a similar boat. Shield Master, slightly satisfying after the original. So originally the ruling was you could bonus action shield bash somebody and then take an attack. Because it says like, you know, when you're taking the attack action or something like that, you can hit somebody with the shield as a bonus action to shove them prone or push them back. And originally, way back in like 2015 ruling, you know, rules clarifications, it was you can hit them with that as long as your intended follow-up was an attack that was allowed. And that has since been changed in the official ruling that you need to attack first, prove that you're taking the attack action, then you can use the shield bash from the bonus action. So you could, in theory, attack once, shield bash and then attack again or however many attacks you have after the fact but you can't open the fight with a shield bash to knock somebody prone to attack them with advantage i also understand and respect that mechanically but it makes me a little dissatisfied with it skilled i'm gonna say i'm satisfied again actually yeah i'm gonna say i'm satisfied with that because i feel like skilled is in a similar boat to resilient but it's up to three skills or three tools or a combination of those depending on what you pick that could be a very impactful change again albeit still kind of mechanically boring but all of a sudden having thieves tools proficiency could go a long way skulker dissatisfied it's not great spell sniper slightly satisfied it's okay tavern brawler again dissatisfied tough Again, it's going to fall in that satisfied category. Mechanically very strong in most instances. You'd be better off if, you know, if you're not specifically looking to raise your constitution for the purposes of constitution saving throws or concentration checks. If you're looking to get that little bit of extra hit points from a plus two to your constitution, uh, you know, modifier to plus two to your constitution score, more often than not, you'd be better off to just take tough and get double that amount. Um... It's strong, again, just mechanically kind of boring. Warcaster, I'm going to put it satisfied as well. I, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Warcaster myself. Um, I don't know why. I guess I've just never taken it on any of my spellcasters. Maybe I'm really missing out. And Weapon Master is the worst thing in the world, so that goes on the bottom. Okay, have I ever taken... Oh, more questions. Right. Have I ever taken this feat when building a character or played with someone who took this feat? I have taken this character. This... Uh, I have, wow, just alert. I've not played with anybody who's done any of these other ones. I feel like I've played with somebody that took dual wheeler once, maybe? No, I don't even think so. All right, next. I've played with somebody who took elemental adept. I've done both with great weapon master. I have taken Heavy Armor Master. I've taken Inspiring Leader. I play with somebody who's taken Lightly Armored. Uh, I play with someone who took Lucky. Mm, play with someone who took Martial Initiate. Medium Armor Master. Mobile. Moderately Armored Mounted Combatant. I have taken Observant, both on the Polearm Master, both on a Resilient. Have I done both? I think I. Just me, I think on the Sentinel. Uh, Sharpshooter. I've taken Shield Master. I feel like I've taken Skilled on one character, but probably just for a one shot. I've taken Tavern Brawler on a character just because I was trying to get that plus one constitution. Uh, I've done both with Tough. 
I think I played with somebody who's taken Warcaster. Anything else we should know? Yes. We want more feats. Uh, we want them to be in line with the current meta slash power level of the game. We also want more weapon based feats. There's not a lot of great options for folks who want to use unique weapons. I'll go IE whip low gun trident etc. Um the flavor of the feats from uh the UA uh UAs for skills and weapons slash tools uh, are a great starting place. We're also not opposed to feet trees slash lines. The concept of various feats with prerequisites. I love to be able to use the extra feats my fighter gets to truly focus and make my attacks slash weapons unique uh, and tailored to my character. Also the concept of crafting feats sounds great but we need an actual crafting system first. There we go, next. Have I ever been a dungeon master? Yes. In the past year, what percentage of your overall, in the past year, are we talking in the past calendar year or the past 31 days? I'm going to just say 75%. Actually, it's probably less than that because I haven't really been DMing too much. But we'll say 75. My age is 35. I am a man. There we go, folks. That is the latest D&D Feats survey. I'm recording this at uh, uh, in the 31st at around 8 p.m. Eastern time. Just to give you a reference, as it seems every time I make a video on surveys, they almost immediately take the survey down. I don't know why, it's just a thing that they seem to do. So again, 8 p.m. Eastern time on the 31st of January here in Eastern time of the United States. We'll see how long it goes before they take the survey down. But as always, I do recommend that you go check out these surveys. I do recommend that you fill it out to the best of your ability. And I recommend that you be honest, but also constructive in how you respond, right? Now, they've told us they go through and read all these. I don't know how much of that is true and how much is generalization, but I'm gonna choose to assume that they do. Uh, we have seen in the past comments and feedback on Unearthed Arcana got different aspects of the game shelved, or brought back to the forefront for better or worse. So again, just saying like, you guys suck and I hate all these feats and they're garbage and they're the worst and you guys should feel bad for it. 
I can't tell you not to write that, but if you could illustrate why you think a certain feat, weapon master or what have you, is poorly designed and could be better, or an example of a type of feat or new feats that they should add to the game. Because reminder, we're not getting any changes as far as we know to Xanathar's Guide, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, and then we have Morgan Canyon's Monsters of the Multiverse. As far as we know, those books are remaining unchanged for at least the next two plus years, right? That means that whatever we're gonna get in this new expanded updated rules we're gonna get in 2024 is likely gonna be a brand new core rulebook set. And that by that I mean Dungeon Master's Guide, Monster Manual, Player's Handbook. So they're gonna basically use these two years as guinea pig workshop years to figure out what they like and what the reception is and how people feel about different aspects between now and then. And based on that feedback and what people like and one of the main methods they can get that information is from these surveys, they can try to use that to formulate whatever this new genesis is. I do still believe we'll be very much in the bones of fifth edition, you know, that we're in the skeletal structure of fifth edition will remain largely the same. But I do also anticipate changes as that's what these surveys are here to figure out. So if you can get in and provide as much feedback as you can now, perhaps your decisions or my decisions or our collective decisions will help shape what we ultimately get in two years from now. So anyway, please let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Also, if they happen to take the survey down and it's removed from the internet for one reason or another, and you do decide to comment that, please drop a time code as like a date and time as when you found it so people know, hey, it's, you know, the, the 1st of February at 10 a.m. Eastern time. The survey is closed now. Uh, they usually do say they try to leave these open for a week or two. We also know that that's not the case. Uh, but let me know your thoughts again in the comments down below. And I'll see you all next time.